Okay, so integration by recognition is really important. Um, I guess important part of the course in the sense that it's always on every exam and it's always an area that as students typically we battle with. So the process is normally we get asked to differentiate a function, okay, because we'll need that answer to help us anti-differentiate a function that we can't work out, all right? So x cos x, we don't have a product rule for working out the antiderivative. So there's no doubt I can just put this into the calculator and you can see I can get an answer, but that's not the purpose. The purpose is, well, can you somehow work out an antiderivative of x cos x and hence use that to evaluate the integral? So in the kindness of their hearts, we always get given a particular function that we need to differentiate and then we use that answer to help us work out the integral. So here we get told to differentiate x sine x. So that's a product rule. u equals x, u dashed is equal to 1. v equals sine x, v dashed is the derivative of sine, which is cos. So now um, the derivative of x sine x x is equal to derivative of the first, so we'll go 1 times um, the second, which is sine x, plus the derivative of the second, which is cos x, times the first, which is x. So we can see here that the derivative of that function is sine x plus x cos x. Now, normally what happens is, in that derivative somewhere is the term that we're looking for. Now, whether it's x cos x as it is here exactly, or it's a 2x cos x, or it's a half x cos x, it'll be that term, hopefully just on its own, or with a little bit of manipulation, all right? So now the process is, I think, the best way. Let's write out, let's write out that derivative line again, derivative of x sine x is equal to sine x plus x cos x. Because what we do now is let's work out the antiderivative of every term with respect to x. So I want to anti-differentiate that with respect to x, anti-differentiate that with respect to x, anti-differentiate that with respect to x. Because now, that's the expression that I'm looking for. There's my x cos x dx. Let's simplify each of these other terms. The antiderivative of the derivative is just the function itself. So if I've got the derivative here and I anti-differentiate it, I'm just going to end up with x sine x. Let's take this antiderivative of sine x across to the left-hand side, and that's equal to the integral of x cos x dx. All right. So now I've got an expression for the antiderivative. And in fact, let's just work out that little integral, x sine x minus the antiderivative of sine is negative cos uh, that's equal to the antiderivative of x cos x dx. So let's rewrite that now as saying the antiderivative of x cos x dx. Let's put our limits of integration in. Evaluated between 0 and pi on 6 is equal to the antiderivative of this function, which is simply x sine x minus cos x evaluated between 0 and pi on 6, okay? And that's the sort of trick, if you like. We've just got an expression for x cos x, the integral of x cos x dx, without physically doing its antiderivative. We've worked from, up in A, the derivative of x sine x and had the expression present that we need. So now I can just substitute in my values as I would normally. So the antiderivative of 0 
to pi on 6, x cos x dx is equal to, substitute pi on 6 in, pi on 6 times sine pi on 6 minus cos pi on 6 minus, put 0 in, or 0 times sine x is 0, so we get 0 minus cos 0. So I get pi on 6 times sine of pi on 6 is a half minus cos of pi on 6, which is root 3 on 2. Minus minus is a plus. Just looking at our answer here and notice that, I hope you guys notice, Minus and minus is a plus, so the answer is plus cos x. So I should have a plus cos x there, and a plus there. Sorry about that, which is equal to, we get a pi on 12, plus root 3 on 2, and now the minus and minus here is minus 1. So... You'd like to think you can get the algebra right. All right, so the key part of it, if ever we get the hence instruction, it means you can't just go straight to the CAS and get an antiderivative, okay? You have to use the derivative or part A to then help solve part B, all right? So you've got to practice this process a lot, and I really firmly believe that once you get your derivative, rewrite it out, and then take an antiderivative of each term separately, and hopefully you'll be able to see where the, the function you're trying to anti-differentiate can come from. Put another one. Let's just give yourself a little bit more landscape. All right, so this one says first, differentiate y equal to natural log of cos x, okay? So we have a chain rule. So if I put u equal to cos x, u or du dx is equal to derivative of cos is minus sine. If y is equal to the natural log of u, dy du is equal to one on u. So let's get run out of room here. So therefore, dy dx is equal to negative sine x over u, which is equal to negative sine x on cos x, which is equal to negative tan x, okay? So there's my derivative. So how does that help me? Let's go with our... Um, what I said, dy dx is equal to negative tan x. So now if I anti-differentiate everything, anti-derivative take the negative out the front. So there's my anti-derivative of tan x dx statement. That's what I'm looking for because that's what it's asking me to find. So what does that mean? The left-hand side becomes uh, the antiderivative of dy dx with respect to x is just y. I'm going to bring the negative sign across. That's equal to the integral of tan x dx. So I've got what tan x dx is equal to, or the integral of tan x dx, I should say. Tan x dx is equal to negative y. Now, what was y to begin with? Y was the function there which is equal to negative natural log of cos x, okay? So, same, hopefully the same sort of flow. Work out a derivative. The answer to that derivative should contain the integral or any derivative that we're trying to work out, all right? So, last one, differentiate y equals sine x squared. So, if I put u equal to x squared, du dx is equal to 2x. Um, therefore, 
y is equal to sine of u dy du is a good derivative of sine is positive cos so therefore dy dx is equal to 2x times cos u which is 2x cos x squared all right so there's my derivative how does that compare to what the antiderivative is we're looking for I'm looking for x cos x squared. I've got 2x cos x squared, so I'm pretty close. Starting point, let's write out dy dx is equal to 2x cos x squared. Okay? Anti-differentiate everything. The antiderivative of the left-hand side equals the antiderivative of the right hand side and again notice how i brought the two out the front here because now the left hand side the antiderivative of dy dx is y divide by two is equal to the antiderivative of x cos x squared dx there's the expression here that i'm trying to work out the antiderivative of all right, so therefore, uh, the integral of x cos x squared dx evaluated between 0 and 1 is equal to y, whatever y was. Where's my y function? y is equal to sine x squared on 2. So that's equal to a half sine x squared evaluated between one and zero. All right, so let's come over here. So therefore we get it's equal to one half sine of one squared minus one half sine of zero squared, which is one half sine of one. All right, let's check our calculated dumps. 